my name is Jen and welcome to my home kitchen. So this is actually my house, so it's not Sour Bomb, it's not MasterChef, it's not anywhere else, but it's um, the comfort of my own house. So today we're gonna do yet another dessert recipe. Today we wanna uh, put it into like a very classic dessert. So we're gonna do a shoe pastry. Um, we can try out the different formats of like a round shoe, a uh, eclair shape, and we'll see how we can incorporate all these flavours into this shoe pastry. And then the next one would be a rhubarb custard and a pistachio rose praline. So that would be the topping and the filling for the shoe. And I have something quite unique I want to show you guys. Uh, I'm going to do candied rhubarb strips for garnishes. So what we're going to do is kind of cut the rhubarb really thinly, soak it in syrup and just air dry it in the oven and then you get this very beautiful like strips of candy that you can top your shoe pastry with. Yep, so let's just get started. We have all the wet ingredients weighed out already. So that's your water, milk, sugar and butter. So we'll just go ahead to put everything into the toma mix. Butter, milk. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, shoe recipes, there's actually a difference between using butter, uh, no sorry, milk and water. So if you see some recipes has like a lot more water, it's because they want a more crisp like crust and also the inside will be a bit more drier. If you use more milk, uh, your shoe will actually be more tender. So that's the difference. So if you find that your shoe is not as dry and crispy as you hope, sometimes you can tweak the recipe by lessening the milk and replacing with water. So we're just going to bring this up to a boil and I'm going to do it at 120 Just kind of turn it at speed 1.5 and then we're going to go for about 5 minutes or until I see like bubbles like it's simmering So I always like to just take off the cap so we know what is going on so your butter must be melted um, and also like it has to be like simmering so it's already boiling lah, basically. And then here I measured out um, the flour and the salt. So one rookie mistake that I made before is that I don't sift the flour. I was just like oh you know it'll mix through, I'll dump it in and then the thermal mix will do the work. But actually the clumps is quite intense especially if like you're using you know, flour that is much older. You know, we, we are all guilty of this, leaving flour everywhere, packet unopened, open, and then uh, tie it with rubber band, it's just somewhere, right? Then one day you decide to bake and then you take it out and you want to use it. But what happens is that the length of time and Singapore's humidity is making the flour clump together. So for us, I think for every recipe, just try to sift the flour only if you're making breads. So breads is a whole other story because it's very vigorous mixing so we don't really need a sieve. I've measured that out. I'm just going to put it into a drum sieve and make sure your bowl is big enough so you don't make a mess. Then you just sieve it. So let's just bring it all the way down to about 70 degrees and let me open the cap and then we can add the flour in. So it's definitely steaming. Can you see it? The steam. <laughs> and then we're just gonna add the flour and then I'm just gonna stir it on 1.5 again and then it'll start to like clump up really fast okay I'm gonna go slightly faster at 2.5 still at 70, 70 degrees and I'm gonna just whip it like keep stirring it until I feel that it's like much drier so next crucial part is the eggs so we need about four eggs 
but we won't just crack the egg straight into the batter itself because when you do that you might risk the whole mixture becoming too wet and too wet pastry is really not fun because you can't pipe the shapes that you want you can't it can't hold the shape when you bake it'll just collapse everywhere so i tend to just crack the eggs in a separate bowl and whip it up together so now i see the I see it being really dry. I'll show it to you. And what I like to do, down, do now is to release the heat. So we are adding eggs inside and you don't want scrambled eggs. So if you just add in the eggs now, it's just gonna be a mess. And uh, we usually like beat it up for quite a while until the internal temperature is like just look warm water-ish yeah. so temperature goes all the way down and then I'll just mix at speed 2 so now it's just like cooling down so you just let the hot egg escape Okay, so one minute, let me check. Yeah, it's definitely much less warm. Okay, let's just let it air dry. We can go on to the custard. Okay, so now we're gonna do the vanilla bean custard. So what we're gonna do is just put milk into the tomato mix first. So that's 300 grams. And I'm going to put it at 100 degrees Celsius Just until it's boiled Yep, so just put it at a temperature 100 degrees and just a rough timing And then just look at it So it'll, once it simmers then we can mix with the other custard ingredients So here we have the custard ingredients. So we have the flour. Just 30 grams. And we're gonna mix with the sugar. 60 grams. So why do we um, mix sugar and flour together? It's because the larger granules of sugar will break up the flour pieces. So you are kind of like sifting your flour with sugar. Then to this, we'll add 4 egg yolks. That's about 60 grams of egg yolks. Okay. Okay. The milk has boiled, so let's just mix our egg yolks into the flour mixture. Then you're going to add another 50 grams of milk okay. Then to this mixture, just add the hot milk Just one third Into it And then what's in your bowl, just pour everything back into the tomato mix. Cover it and then cook it at 90 degrees for about 15 minutes at 2.5 speed. So at this point, you also want to add your vanilla bean. So just get your pot, you just need one piece here. So just cut it in half and 
And then you want to use the back of your knife so you're not cutting through the vanilla bean. And you want to scrape all the pots up. So you can see like there's all this mini caviars in the pot. So you can just scrape. So let's just slide it in to the tomo mix. While this is cooking, I'm going to show you a very neat trick to do a rhubarb garnish. So you have all this like fresh rhubarb here. I'll just chop it kind of in half. And if you have a man mandolin slicer, it'll be best for this. Uh, but if you don't, you can just use your trusty knife. And also you don't want it too thin, because if it's too thin, it will like burn very easily. So what we are necessarily doing is uh, rhubarb candied strips. So when you candy the strips, right, and then you twist it on a chopstick or something, it'll become a very nice like spiral, pink colour spiral. So just slice through this way and just, just shimmy your knife through the whole length of the rhubarb. So once you're done with the strips, I actually have like a simple syrup with a bit of rhubarb juice and you just want to put it inside the syrup and soak. So you need to soak it for about 10 minutes and then you line it in the oven and then you bake it. So this syrup is like the candied uh, portion of the rhubarb and rhubarb is usually very sour right so you need to get that out. So syrup is very easy, it's just a one-to-one -one ratio. So 100 grams sugar, 100 grams water. So make sure it's submerged and you can prepare like a baking tray with some parchment paper on top. So you have very nice ribbons. So this ribbons, you have to bake it in the oven at about 150 degrees Celsius. You can go lower, you can do like 140, 130. You just want to dry out the pieces and you make sure it doesn't burn. So check every 10 minutes. So 10 minutes, check it until it's like slightly dry and tacky. Then you can twirl it around a chopstick and then it will form like a very nice shape. Right now I'm just kind of softening some gelatin leaves so it comes in this kind of format so just get ice water and just soak it in and once it gets like really soft and gelatinous uh, it's good to pop inside the custard but you have to make sure that this is thickened first then you add the gelatin yeah now the custard has been cooking for about 15 minutes already so we're gonna add the gelatin sheets so the gelatin that you have been soaking in ice water, just make sure that you squeeze it really dry. So just squeeze. Just so that you don't introduce any more liquid inside your custard, which will make it a bit uh, watery. So squeeze. And then just add it into the custard. Then this one, you don't really have to on the heat. Uh, the residual heat will melt the gelatin so just mix we'll mix at 3 until it's uh, well incorporated and when I want to cool custard really quickly I try to get like a flat pan so that it cools down really fast So once you see there's no more like gelatin uh, blobs inside, it should be done. So let's just check a bit. So let's give it a mix through. You can just pour onto your tray. You can see all your dots of beautiful vanilla beans, and it smells really good. Okay, so here you have your custard 
and you want to make it as flat as possible then I'll put a cling film sticking to the surface and I'll pop it inside the fridge or the freezer it depends on how fast or urgent you need it uh, sometimes I put it in the freezer but don't forget it if not it does become ice cream <laughs> basically that is what is frozen custard right so yeah put it in the fridge uh, if you can it's a much better way to cool it down uh, it will have to leave in the fridge for about like one to two hours until it's like fully set um, in the freezer maybe like half an hour then you can check on it yeah so let's get plain film and you want to make sure that it's sticking so that it doesn't form a skin and the skin isn't very nice to eat actually it's a bit tacky it's like milk skin <laughs> some people like it okay so here you are the custard and then just put it in the fridge So that is actually my candied rhubarb, so I'll check on it. Okay, so this is the candied rhubarb. So you can see it's almost... So it's been 15 minutes in the oven. So once you get all these pieces out, um, you just want to pour it on some chopsticks. So I got some wooden chopsticks here. And you can kind of just pour it like that. So, if it's too dry also, it's really hard to twirl. So just make sure that you don't over-bake them. Okay. Okay. So I'll just set this aside that I can use for garnish later. So... We'll get back to our shoe that has been, I'm very sure, very cooled down by now. It is definitely cold. Um, we'll just have to whip it up with the eggs. So the eggs, because you already whisk it right, you have to add it really slowly and you have to make sure you don't add all at once because a common mistake is that you know you follow straight to the recipe but sometimes like if you don't like cook out the dough enough, it'll be too wet so if you add all the eggs in, then the whole mixture will be too wet and then you can't bake your shoe. So let's just go on just spinning so you don't want heat in anything. Add um, like one spin and just add your egg yolk or uh, eggs mixture. So I'm left with like about one egg and then I'll stop and then I'll check the consistency with a spatula. the mixture so it's it's almost like you know like the custard we did just now like a really thick custard this is already there so all this egg that I reserved luckily I didn't put it in so if I added all in just now it will be way too like gloopy but this you know when it falls then it has like the V shape it's very nice okay so this mixture we want to pipe and then um, bake in the oven. So make sure you preheat preheat your oven to about 175 degrees Celsius and it's gonna bake for about 20 minutes. Um, we're gonna put this into a piping bag and then this one you reserve. So the eggs here you can use it for egg wash. I Some people don't like egg wash, some people put egg wash. I prefer egg wash because it has a very nice texture on the outside. Um, I was actually quite confused about this because um, when I first made a shoe and all the recipes didn't require egg wash and I was like why? Like it, it, like it'll be dry and everything so every time the shoe that comes out right without egg wash right it feels very crackly and like dry like a dry pastry which is not something I'm looking for uh, and this mixture will last for about three days four days in the fridge uh, like this uncooked one you can just leave it in the fridge for like a really long time or 
you can pipe it out and then freeze your unbaked mixture and then when you want to make shoe pastry you can pop it out of the freezer just put it on a baking sheet and then put it in the oven and it will bake nicely as well so that's the beautiful thing about the shoe pastry it's so versatile and I think that's why a lot of bakers like using it as well yeah. so so what you want is to just put a nozzle so your nozzle is like a round nozzle and you can add your mixture into the bag okay so once you scrape everything out give it a pat down and then this mixture you can pipe so I'm gonna do just the basic eclair first so with your nozzle just keep it steady and elongate and then just like that it's like lady fingers the tiramisu one not the vegetable but the vegetable is quite long as well so it works either way so when you get to the end you just like to like flick it up so that it doesn't mix it too sharp and pointed at the end okay this one later on you can put it in the fridge first and then so I got some remaining egg wash from just now so I just will use a brush and then I'll brush it on so you want to give it as much time as it can inside the oven so you must think of it this way um, a good shoe has a very open inside so how do you get that really open inside is that you have enough time in the oven to puff and to dry out so if the inside is not dry you'll get very soggy inside so this one in the oven um, 175 20 minutes So after 20 minutes, um, I'll check on it. If I feel like the inside is still not that hollow, I'll give it another 10 minutes at a lower temperature just to dry it out. Yeah. So now we have done custard, resting in the fridge, shoe, done. Um, the one thing that I didn't show you guys is the rhubarb jam. But this one is very straightforward. Just cut rhubarb, sugar and lemon and then just boil it down. It takes like 10 minutes and then you get this jammy goodness. Yeah, so we have the jam, the custard, and the last one, which is the glaze, is the pistachio rose praline. You get a clean tomomix. Make sure there's no water inside. And we're gonna need the pistachios. And also some caramel. So I think the caramel, I thought it in my previous session. Okay, so here we have about 200 grams of pistachios. And I'm gonna add about, let's try, let's measure using the Tomo mix. You need about 20. It also depends on your level of sweetness. And you just wanna mix this on speed 6. So just go to speed 6. on the hand and just let it run for about a few minutes until like it becomes a very nice butter consistency okay so at this point it's already clumped up so I will taste the sweetness level measure out I feel like it needs another 20 more So let's go at speed 3 again. So as you can see now, it's 
super duper smooth. So there's a pistachio butter. Let's taste first because I always like to balance with some salt and rose water. So that's the special component about this. It's really shocking when you get a rose taste. So add like I'll go like two teaspoons. So the rose water is about five grams. So it's one teaspoon. So same thing, 3.5, just let it spin until it's like all homogeneous. And another thing about this is that the longer it sits, the rose flavour gets even better. Because it's like mellowed out. So now it might be quite strong. But over a few days, it's like mellow and mellower and mellower. And then it becomes very like... Nice. Alright, so... Basically, um, because it's a glaze, so the nut butter is really good by itself. But because it's a glaze, it's not something like you spread on bread, right? It's like for desserts and everything. I'll add a little bit more oil, just to make it like gooey and glazy. So about 15 grams. So, we have taken out the custard from the fridge and it's fully set. It's fully set. And we just want to whip in some cream. So, we have the butterfly whisk attachment with the Tomo Mates. And we want to add in about 200 grams of cream. So just whisk. Okay, so once you hear that, you know, like it's not blooping anymore. Most likely it's done. Yeah, sounds right. Ta da! That's pretty fast, yeah. Faster than my hand, <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, so we'll scrape out all the whipped cream. Okay, okay, so let's just scrape down our custard mixture. So if it's very set right, it will just come off like that. <laughs> so just put it inside the tomato mix. And then for this amount, I'll just do like 50 grams. <laughs> Cover. So you usually get a very lightened up custard. Okay. Okay, so the final part of everything is assembling. So this ones are a bit still warm, so I'm gonna start with the eclairs first. So very easy, uh if you already have like your shapes done, usually they'll just poke like the bottom. So I'll do like two sides.
So if it's well done, when you poke through, you should see like an empty space inside there. Correct. So I think we can do a half and decorate from there. Okay. So we have our rhubarb jam here. So I like to actually pipe in the jam first. So whenever you have a more liquid uh, product, you always pipe it first. So in the hole, you can just pipe in the rhubarb jam. So try to go on both sides because it's quite a long eclair. I'll do something else for the open ones. Show you the filled ones first. So it should fill up quite generously. Yeah. So I mean a way that I like to decorate is to use the almond butter. Then I'll just glaze the top. That. So if your pistachio butter is very smooth, it should just leak over. And then so that's my little trick so I like to buy this freeze-dried raspberry for decorations so they come in like this dried format and if you just crunch it up and just splatter it's very pretty it's like petals can also do the rhubarb So it's like really fun. Uh, you can use contra contrasting colors. So your rhubarb and the green always looks very nice together. And that's why I thought of this combination. Yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and finish up all this. Then we'll bring it up on a platter and then we can see the cross section.